Welcome back to the Chess Geek channel. Hopefully you guys are doing super good. As always, we are continuing our Karokan masterclass, moving on to chapter 4, which is the Karokan and the Tartikauer variation, which is knight to c3, we take, they take, we go knight to f6, they take, and we take with the e-pawn. This is my favorite variation in the Karokan, and I've had my most memorable games of the Karo in this specific line, and the reasons will become clear as you continue watching this video, there are some beautiful attacking motifs that make this variation super, super stunning to play. So we're going to cover this in real depth in the video today. There's, as always, complete PGNs in my website. The link is in the description. So if you want to study these variations on your own, you can put this into chessable, chess base, uh, lead chess, whatever you prefer, then you can go ahead and feel free to do so. The link is in the description. And with that out of the way, let's jump straight in. So the Tartikauer mainline variation begins with, of course, c6. It can transpose if they start with knight c3, we go d5, they go d4. We're going to transpose into it. But the traditional way is to, of course, they play d4, we go d5, and now they go knight to c3. They can also go knight to d2, and after takes, takes, we're again transposed. So there's a couple of ways to reach it, but it's really this sort of uh, position that we're, that, that we're talking about today. We play knight to f6, the main line, and in this position, there's a number of options for them. Today, we're covering the main option they have, the main weapon, which is knight takes f6, and we're looking at e takes f6. However, there are a variety of other uh, sidelines and different options that they have, and we're going to cover all of those in uh, the, the next video. So in the next chapter, we're going to look at the other variations that they have from this position. Today, we're looking at the main variation, my favorite, the Tartikauer. We take with the e-pawn. I should mention, if somehow you don't like these variations, and I, I really think you will, but if you don't, then taking with the g-pawn is also a complete viable option. And there's players who, uh, you know, swear by the system. This is their, their main weapon of choice against the mainline Karo Khan. But I personally really enjoy playing e takes f6 and our basic setup that we're going for is bishop to d6 bishop uh, to e6 we're going to of course castle short this justifies this pawn structure because even though these pawn structures might not seem so good they're very solid and they're very hard to break we control a ton of squares uh, next to our king so any uh, idea of an attack becomes infinitely more difficult for them to generate so we're going to develop our pieces very naturally, castle long, get our rook to the open file, the knight comes with d7, and then it comes to f8, and then it comes to g6. We develop our queen out, and we go for an attack. That's the basic idea. How will this actually play out? Well, let me show you. So we go e takes on f6. There's two main options that they have that I really should emphasize. The first option is... If you're playing someone who's not so experienced, someone who's kind of just playing a casual way to develop their pieces, they just kind of, you know, develop in a number of ways. It doesn't really matter the move order, they castle short, and they call it a day. This is the, the best way that we can, uh, this is the best option that we can hope for, because here we can truly have a lot of fun. The more experienced way, the grand master level uh, of play, is a very specific line where they go c3, bishop to d3, and queen to c2, they try to put some pressure here, and then they castle long. We're going to also cover this. It's not so dangerous. We also have some fun ideas against this one, but we're going to start um, with, with the my favorite, the, the more common knight to f3. We go bishop to d6, developing our pieces. They go c3. They're solidifying the center. We castle. They go bishop to d3. We go rook to e8 check. They go bishop to e3 and we develop our bishop to g4. Now here they could still try to, to play differently and go queen to c2 and castle long, and that will kind of transpose into the sort of positions that you're going to see later in the video when we cover that. But I'm going to assume that they play the more traditional, the more common castles. Now, what is our idea here? Where, as I mentioned, we're going for a quick attack. So I like the move knight to d7 here. Our idea is to get the knight to g6, and then generate a kingside attack with every single piece involved. Now, h3 is a move that at some point you're almost always going to see. It's very annoying for them to keep this pin 
uh, in their position because in this position, if they keep the pin, the queen is tied down. They can never move the queen because then we take. And if they move their bishop back, they've wasted a ton of moves. They have a very passive setup. It's very difficult for them to do anything but go h3. And h3 seems great in, in most positions. They give their king some breathing room. They kick out the bishop. It seems great. Bishop h5 is probably what they're expecting. And they're thinking, okay, awesome. We went h3. We questioned the bishop. Now we can go bishop e2. And we've, we've at least clarified the situation. But we don't go for bishop to h5. We go bishop to e6. And this h3 pawn is going to be a hook. We're going to go queen d7 and target this pawn with all of our forces. So they go rook to e1, knight to f8. We go queen to d7. And after queen to c2, we can go rook to a, uh, we can go knight to g6, keeping our pressure in the position, adding more pieces even in the attack. And after rook a to d1, we take. And this is the brilliant sacrifice that we've been setting up the whole game. And with the, the white pieces, it's not so obvious that we're going for this. Of course, now that you know it, it seems quite obvious. But it seems like we've just developed this pawn structure seems uh, fine. It doesn't seem like there's anything inherently wrong with it. And these sacrifices very rarely actually work. So black usually doesn't think of even checking these sacrifices. But in this very specific case, in the Tartikar main line, these sacrifices almost always work. And what I'm going to spend time doing now is show you the different defensive setups white can do and the different uh, attacking ideas that we have against those. So we're already threatening to just win the knight here. Um, so they have to do something against this. So let's look at a couple of options. First of all, knight to d2 allows queen to h2 check and a beautiful mate with knight to f4. This is one of the nice things. The rook is on the e-file, so if we force the king over to the e-file, uh, we're going to have this knight to f4 idea, which is one of the reasons why it's, it's usually pretty critical that the knight first comes to g6. So this is one of the key attacking motifs that you should be aware of. Um, alternatively, they can try a ton of other stuff. Let's look at bishop to e2. This is one of my favorite because the move here is super surprising. It seems like we can't really continue an attack. The knight defends on h2. How can we get more pieces involved? Well, knight h4 ends the game on the spot. We're threatening again to win the knight if they do nothing, uh, or if they try to defend our other threat of checkmate, which is also impossible to defend. And if they take, then we also have checkmate with queen to h2 and mate. In some cases, this mate might not exist for one reason or another. So there's a ni another nice tactical idea. Rook takes e3 to weaken this f2 square. So then we can go check. The king moves, check. And in the end, we can mate on this f2 square. So there's a couple of attacking ideas, a couple of checkmating uh, threats. And uh, this is already just checkmating in a couple of moves. Really nothing that they can do about it. Um, so that's one of the nice cool things. Queen to d2, I suppose, is another, a queen to e2 is another option. Um, but here again, we have knight h4 with a very similar setup. Uh, we also have ideas of going knight f4 in this position. That's another nice tactical idea to notice with the queen, uh, you know, entering this pin. So that's not really an option. A couple more options. If they go bishop f1, their point is, okay, you get back the material, but at least I try to hold on to the position. Well, after queen h5, our attack continues, right? We're th still threatening to bring more pieces into the game to, you know, get the knight in, potentially to push this pawn to f4. Um, you know, our, our attack definitely is still existing. And of course, materially, we are doing perfectly well. In fact, we are up material in this position uh, because we regained that piece and we were up some pawns. So the, the other thing that I want to show and I'm not done because there's many other beautiful ways to play this position, is queen d2, which makes no sense. They're giving us the knight. I just want to show this variation to show you more ways for us to attack. So you've seen how the, the bishop and queen can go in and lead to checkmate. The knight can come in in a variety of ways. But this rook is also often brutally underused. So for example, queen d2, play some random moves. Bear with me for a second. If, if we get a setup like this, where let's say instead of going queen c2 in the original position, they went queen d2, and now they're trying to defend the knight. Well, aside from the other variety of great things that we have, 
Rook to e4 is, is a totally viable way to, again, try to end the game immediately. So the Rook can come in through e4. Sometimes the Rook can also come in if there's nothing else you can do. f5 and Rook e6 and Rook g6. This is also a, a very beautiful way to get your, your pieces involved. I very rarely, almost never have used this uh, Rook on a8. It's just been unnecessary. These four pieces have basically generated checkmating attacks irrespective of the defensive setup they have but if you need it for one reason or another then you can of course you know stack rooks get your other rook involved you can go you know rook e6 and then rook uh, a to e8 and you know there's there's ways to of course generate more play h5 h4 you can be creative here but really the handful of attacking uh, techniques that i just uh, taught you right getting the knight to h4 getting the knight to f4 getting the rook in uh, just this basic checkmate, this other checkmate over here, these will really carry you in 99% of the games and will allow you to win in a very stunning fashion. So hopefully you also see why I'm so excited to share this. These sort of positions are so much fun. Um, and, you know, the attacking motifs that exist are, are absolutely gorgeous. Now, the only other option they have instead of knight to f3 is to go c3 and really try to castle long, right? This is the way they try to avoid all of these tactical ideas is if they try um, to castle on the long side. Now, against this, we also have some fun tactical ideas. But the first thing I want to notice uh, and I want you to note is they're threatening to take on h7. And our knight, if it was already on d7, then the knight to f8 is a beautiful defensive move as well. And it, you know, beautifully guards everything. But here we don't have that. So you can play h6, and for a long time this was considered the main option, but h5 recently has um, been shown to be considerably better, grabbing more space and making the attack that they will inevitably go for, because we're going to get an opposite side castling game, right? So we're going for an attack over here, they want to go for an attack over here, but now with this pawn on h5, that becomes much more difficult to pull off. So castles, bishop e6, we go knight d7, queen to a5, um, and we go rook to c8, right? We're happy with the rook over here to potentially attack later in the game. We want the rook to come to the c file. And after we launch with b5, I mean, we're already setting up a very dangerous attack. And notice, again, it's been quite difficult for them to do so because this pawn is on h5, limiting their their moves that they can, they can get away with. So they finally are forced to go g4, even sacrificing a pawn um, in order to just generate some attack. But we don't even go for that pawn. Notice that we've done enough trouble already on the on the queen side. We don't need that pawn. We can simply, you know, push forward, get our knight active. Uh, it's now pressuring this. This is an idea. The b file is open. Bishop to a3 becomes possible. Queen to b4, setting up mating attacks. This rook is weak over here, and there's going to be some double attacks that are possible in some cases. Um, this pawn is also hanging this is a position that needs no more explanation or moves. We're completely crushing here. Um, and that is exactly where I'll leave it. Now, one of the other final notes I want to mention, notice the knight came in and became an aggressive piece in this game. And that's fine. That is why I like to leave the knight on d7. First, move the queen out and try to launch your pawns and see if the knight is needed as a defensive resource or if it can help your attack. There's some cases that if you don't successfully pull off this attack in the most efficient way, they're going to generate some play and it will be helpful, at least reassuring to have the knight on f8. So don't immediately assume the knight can be an attacking resource or a defensive resource. Be flexible with it and allow the knight uh, to be attacking if it can be, you know, if you don't need it as a defensive resource. And otherwise, it could be a great way to hold your king side together. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and like the, the variety of tactical ideas and and concepts that exist in the tartic hour variation make sure you guys let me know down below what you think of this uh, variation and and recommendation that i gave you subscribe for more content just like this like this video if you learn something new from it and i'll see you guys next time peace out